Like, nigga, why the fuck he look mad? I didn't do nothing wrong. Like, he he's walking around the house huffing and puffing as if I fucking, you know, got caught talking to niggas or bitches or whatever. So I asked him, I'm like, um, what's wrong with you? Let's go ahead and get into the video. Um, before I do get into the video, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because you don't want to miss the videos. You don't want to miss it, none of that at all. I know I'm, I'm really, really behind. Um, however, I'm going to continue. So even though December is almost over, bitch, we're going to start up something else whenever these story times overlap in uh, January. So don't worry. Just because story miss and quotation marks are um, almost over, don't mean the stories are. So... Let's get into it. If you watched my previous video, my previous video was about how I caught Ghost um, talking to bitches and, you know, basically doing his own thing for the very first time. I um, was very, very devastated about that because I didn't think that he would be the type to even do that to begin with. But I thought wrong and in result of it, you know, I, I kind of beat myself up about it because he ended up fl flipping the script and stuff like that. Go ahead and watch that video if you haven't watched it already. That's going to be the video right before this, which was um, number nine. So go ahead and watch number nine and come back to this story. And if you haven't watched eight, seven, six, all of that, go ahead and watch that too because you don't want to miss it. Um, so yeah, like I said, this story is about how he broke my finger. Um, also about how he put his hands on me for the very first time. Before I get into it, I do want to let you know I will have pictures. If you're really, really squeamish, don't, well, I don't know. I could tell y'all to skip over it, but I don't really know when I'm gonna put the, put the video, I mean, put the uh, picture in it, but if you're not, cool. If you are, um, I don't know what to tell you. So, um, let's get into it. Basically, after the last situation, our relationship was the same. Like, I viewed him totally different. Like, I viewed him as basically just like Freddie, like a cheating ass nigga, even though I forgave him and I took him back like a dumbass, which, you know, I shouldn't have. And like I told y'all, a lot of the stuff that I'm getting ready to tell y'all, I made a lot of dumbass decisions. Like, I should have left him at the door whenever he asked me for my motherfucking Wi-Fi password because, like, that's fucking rude. Like, nigga, you just came to my house for the first time. And you asking for my Wi-Fi password, like, that's a bad look. But, you know, I kept it moving. And um, at this point, this happened in April. So this is seven months down the line of our relationship, of what I'm getting ready to tell y'all. So um, we had just moved into the new place. After what happened, like how he flipped the script on me and stuff like that, and I actually, after I saw his behavior, like, b began to be, like, kind of weird, I no longer felt comfortable with my son, uh, my, my youngest, um, being around him. Because at the time, we still, me and his dad still had this agreement. But um, we started this agreement uh, of having our son a week at a time. I have him Sunday to Sunday. He has him Sunday to Sunday. And, um... It was like that. But whenever my mom moved out and whenever it was just me and Freddie, um, I no longer felt comfortable with my son being around him because, um, I don't know, just the way that he moved, it was just the way that he operated, I didn't feel comfortable. And I know his daddy didn't play that shit, so I'm like, let me just, you know, I, I even told um, his dad, Freddie, um, you know, the situation, like, I didn't really feel comfortable because, like, he made me feel weird. Like, he made me feel like whenever I had my son around, like, he was jealous and stuff like that. And I'm not justifying, you know, th this at all because I really, really miss my son. My son should have, in fact, still been in my home two weeks out of the month like we're doing right now. Um, but due to the situation, I felt like it was best that he stayed away from it because I didn't know what he was going to do. Um, I, I didn't know at this point. I knew he, I started to feel like he was crazy, but I didn't know how crazy he was yet. Um, so yeah. Um, so this particular night, um, he told me that he was going to go to some type of show with his friends. Uh, well, it, he has a cousin in Houston. Um, supposedly it's his cousin, you know, the nigga Lyle all the time, so I don't know. But it was supposedly his cousin, and, um, they, whenever we were in the other apartment that we moved out of, or that we got evicted out of, from, rather, um, he would always go to these shows and stuff like that. And I would know he would go to these shows, and whenever I say shows, it's like a kind of, kind of like a, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm <laughs> Kind of like a, um, 
a talent show or something like that where like a lot of people who want to rap or upcoming rappers and stuff you know show off their talent or whatever every time he would go um he would post it on snapchat like he would post because one time he ended up performing whack as hell but one time he ended up performing he recorded that he put it on his snapchat and then just another time whenever he just went just to go he also um, posted on snapchat and he every time he would go he would he would never come home until about three four o'clock in the morning or whatever so it was i basically i can't i became accustomed to whenever he goes to these shows that and he will always get picked up that's another thing i need to mention he would always get picked up by his cousin and the, you know the people who he's going to the show with they will always pick him up he would never use the car or use my car rather to go so this particular night he randomly he was on the toilet as a matter of fact and he randomly say uh, i'm gonna go out to a show tonight now normally whenever his people invite him to a show they'll call him and i'll hear the conversation and like i would know okay yeah like you know they're really going to a show or whatever um, but this particular time, I didn't hear that. Like, I didn't hear any phone calls. They didn't call him. Like, they didn't. I didn't hear the conversation at all or anything like that. And I thought that was kind of weird, but you know me. I'm so, well, at the time, I was really, really naive. Well, I can't say I was naive because I always had these feelings whenever something wasn't right. However, I never really spoke on it because he was the type, you speak on some shit, he gonna get fucking mad because you know he got fucking anger problems and stuff like that. So, like, I never really liked to express how I felt about certain stuff like that to him, period. So, he was he was like, yeah, we, I'm going to the show tonight. I'm like, okay, cool. Now, he took the car. Okay. I'm thinking to myself, oh, they're not picking you up? Nah, I'm gonna uh, I'm meet them over there. Okay, cool. You know, take the car. We'll take my car, and um, you could go ahead. That's that's fine. Maybe they didn't want to pick you up this time. Cool, whatever. Um, so normally, whenever, cause I didn't have a life outside of him. Honestly, y'all, I barely even talked to my friends because, I like he made me feel like he didn't want me to have friends. Like he will always be in my conversation, especially after he saw the conversation between me and my best friend, which her name is Tawana. That's her real name. I ain't gotta cover her name up. Um, hey girl, but Tawana, that's my best friend who lives in um Georgia. After he saw the conversation between us, like, I, I didn't really text her that much afterwards. And whenever I did text her, it was like he would be gone to work or some shit like that. So I didn't really want to, like, talk to her or anybody, period, um, whenever he was around. Because he was always, like, looking over me. And as if I was a cheating ass bitch, like, nigga, you, was, you a cheating ass nigga. So why the fuck you over me? Like, I'm doing something that I ain't got no business on, but, you know, whatever. Um, so whenever he left, I was on the couch watching TV. I think I was watching Martin or some shit like that. And, um, he, he left at about 10 something, y'all. Why he came back at like 12 something? He come back and I'm not expecting him to come back so early. Cause like I said, every single time he goes to these shows, he's always gone at about until about four or five o'clock in the morning or three, four or five, something like that. Um, and I, you know, like I said, I became accustomed to that. And also, he always would post the show and stuff like that on his Snapchat. Now, I'm at home not doing nothing. So, you know, I'm constantly refreshing my Snapchat uh, news feed. Excuse me, Lord. I'm, I'm constantly refreshing my, my feed or whatever. I don't see any snaps from him. I don't see none of that. So I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. Maybe he just didn't think to record this particular time or whatever but whenever he walked in that door at about 12 which was like two hours later i became really confused because i'm like why you why you so can't come in so early like i'm more than sure the show the show the quote you know the show just started and you're coming home so early and then another thing that threw me off is that whenever he came home like as soon as he came to the house he sat on the couch and like just laid on me for like a minute or two and i'm like this nigga don't never do that like why the fuck he laying on me and that was another red flag and i said it's a red flag to me because if a nigga not doing if he, if he don't normally do stuff well i'm not gonna say all niggas but the niggas that i've experienced okay whenever a nigga just all of a sudden leave and they come home and 
be all up on you whenever like I told y'all in a, in a previous story time like he was never affectionate he never wanted to be around me really like he was always in his phone he was always doing this he was always on the game like he was never all up under me like I liked stuff like that but he was not like that so I became accustomed to that too so whenever he came and laid on me for a few seconds or for a minute or two I'm thinking to myself like what the fuck did he want like why is he on me so he did that and eventually he went in the room and laid down like he didn't take a shower he didn't do any of that and me i was so sex deprived y'all that there have been times where like i never knew when he was gonna have sex with me i never knew when he was gonna feel like having sex so i will always prepare myself just in case so i'm thinking okay hey he just went, came home from a show or whatever i'm probably about to get some dick or whatever because while he was gone i had took a bath or whatever and so whenever he came back i'm thinking okay maybe i'm probably about to get some dick like it ain't even it's not that late you know he ain't got nothing to do in the morning like you know maybe i am so i got in a bed with him bitch he was asleep like he didn't do none of that so that's another thing that kind of raised my eye a little bit like why he ain't doing nothing like why he just came home and didn't do anything so the reason why i felt like it was something fishy whenever he just came and laid up on me is because whenever niggas doing did something that they ain't got no business doing they do stuff like that like they be like extra affectionate with you they do stuff that they don't normally do whenever they either feel guilty or w whatever the case may be and so i'm thinking to myself like this nigga don't never do that like ever this nigga never did that at all so um the next day came or whatever and i actually just just started a job at apple i don't i no longer work for them anymore um, a lot of y'all been asking me how to work from home. Go to dreambasehomework.com. So, yeah, I just started working at Apple. I had an hour break. I had an hour lunch, actually. And so, I, whenever I was on my break, I started uh, cooking. I was, I started preparing the food or whatever so that by the time I got off work, the food could be ready to eat or, so, or halfway done or whatever like that. So, I'm in the kitchen preparing my food, cooking and stuff like that and he's home too and so his phone rang i think he was actually on the computer on his laptop or whatever um whenever this was going on and uh his phone rang and so he answered the phone he didn't get up go into another room or anything like that he answered the phone and i can tell that it was a female that he was talking to on the phone because it was that loud um and then his conversation the conversation basically went like oh yeah <coughs> excuse me it was like Oh yeah, um, you gave me the uh, you gave me the address, but whenever I had pulled up, it uh, I I came to a dead end, or I was like by a warehouse or something like that, and I couldn't find find uh, find where he was. And so, you know I me, mean? I'm just cooking and listening. I don't know if he realized that I'm listening. I don't know if he realized what he's saying. Um, it's incriminating him. Um, however, I'm still listening. And so he was I he was just talking or whatever, saying this shit. And so, right after he got off the phone, right after he got off the phone, y'all, he said, Bae, I might be going to the studio tonight. Fuck you mean you going to the studio? Like, he never went to the studio. Like, I told y'all that he wanted to be a rapper and stuff like that, supposedly. But remember, I bought him the, that studio equipment. So, ever since I bought him that studio equipment, he was attempting to record at the house. My nigga, why are you going to the studio after you got a $300 studio in a fucking house that you've been using all this time but all of a sudden you go into the studio nigga what studio you've never mentioned a studio to me and if you did like nigga you gotta pay for a studio you gotta pay for studio time you don't got no hookups you don't know every you don't know nobody like that in houston that i know of that could just let you just walk into their motherfucking studio and just fucking record some trash ass shit for you know for free like nigga i'm not dumb so whenever he said that i'm like who are you on the phone with and he was like oh my home girl um and i'm like what home girl and he was like uh oh yeah she came to the house before and this and that i'm like first of all no ain't no home girl of yours comes came to the house so i'm gonna need for you to kind of explain so that's when i actually started kind of like like not being so quiet and actually telling him what was on my mind because after i saw what i saw in his phone i'm like oh no we're not gonna go through this again you know what I'm saying? So, I started speaking the fuck up. So, after I said that, he immediately got upset. He immediately got defensive and was like, um, why are you questioning me? And this and that. Like, he, he always would say, you question me, you question me. Like, nigga, we supposed to be together, right? So, me asking you a simple question 
you know, or two, that's not me necessarily questioning you. You feel like I'm questioning you because you're doing something you ain't got no business doing, okay? Um, ladies, fellas, take notes. So, nah, I'm nah. like, <laughs> I'm like, nigga, what, what, if you ain't doing nothing, if it's just a homegirl or whatever, and, you know, why are you getting so upset? And what she talking about, you was, you pulled up and you couldn't find out where she was and stuff like that and he just he he got upset and he fucking stormed off to the room and slammed the door well stormed off to my room because it was my home and slammed the door so that was something that he always did and i noticed anytime i would like have a conversation with him about something that he didn't want to talk about he would always run a, run away from the situation or like you know, not want to talk about it for whatever reason, and I'm, I'm, I, didn't, I never understood why, but now I knew, like, he didn't want to talk about it because he knew he had to fucking lie and keep up with his lie, and he probably didn't want to do all of that, so he just preferred to make it seem like I was questioning him, sweating him, or whatever. Mind you, I am on my lunch break, okay? At this point, I only got a few minutes left, and I'm fucking arguing back and forth with this nigga, so once he fucking storms out to my room and slams my door, I follow him because, nigga, I'm fucking talking to you. Don't fucking run away from me. Why? While I'm trying to fucking ask you a question, like we, this conversation could be over and done with real quick. You know what I'm saying? So I'm the type of bitch, and I'm still like this. Uh, I understand you don't want to talk, but my nigga, I want to talk, and we're gonna talk. It's and I got that. Exactly. So I mean, you you want to go outside? I'm running outside with you. You want to go in the snow and the sleet? I'm gonna be in snow and sleep with you because you're gonna answer my motherfucking question. I'm just that type of we bitch. Die we, die we sure is because <laughs> we gonna die while I'm, <laughs> I, I give my motherfucking answer. Like I said, he slammed the door, so I opened the door and I'm steady trying to talk to him and this and that. And he said, "Leave me alone! Stop talking to me! Shut up! Get out my face!" He he always would tell me to leave him alone like a little fucking baby. Like nigga, you a grown ass man. My nigga, like, talk to me like an adult. And I'm, at this point, I'm not arguing, like, I'm not yelling with him, but he's always yelling at me. Like, he, he, he always raises his voice for whatever reason. And it takes a lot for me to actually raise my voice. So, he was raising his voice and stuff like that. I'm like, why are you yelling? Like, why are you mad? Why are you angry? Why are you slamming doors and stuff? I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck going on. So, he said, he's saying, get out, get out. And, like, continuing to, like, push push the door in my face. In my motherfucking house. In her house, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, like, I'm, I'm steady. As he uh, closed the door in my face, I opened the door back. And I'm steady talking my shit. He closed the door again in my face. I'm opening the door back and talking my shit. Like, nigga, we gonna just, if we gotta do this all day, we gonna do this all day till you hear what the fuck I got to say until you answer my motherfucking question. So, it got to a point where after we were doing that, the, the back and forth stuff um, so often, um, or so much rather, it got to a point where he opened the door, or after I opened the door rather, he allowed the door to be open, and he um, he grabbed me by my collar. He grabbed me by my collar and like literally damn near picked me up from off the fucking the floor and was like pushing me like in towards the hallway and then he shoved me in my stomach and pushed me even back further and was like stop talking to me leave me alone that was the first time he put his hands on me but i'm not done so even after when after he do, did that i was like why are you putting your hands on me like you never did this before you know i'm just going off because at this point not only is he lying about being wherever the fuck he was also putting his hands on me so i'm like okay this nigga a liar and he he's fucking you know physical so i'm still not backing down yeah he just put his hands on me or whatever but again this is my home you're not gonna slam my door i still opened the motherfucking door and was talking my shit and i was talking i at this point i got even louder because my nigga you just fucking put your hands on me i've never been in a relationship where anybody put their hands on me so you didn't you just fucking put your hands on me and you expect me to shut the fuck up just because you fucking raised your voice a little bit higher than mine i went back in there and i opened the door and at this point i was standing in the i was kind of standing in the door but not really um uh, however he was still yelling leave me alone leave me alone i don't want to talk to you shut the fuck up talking to me um and all of that and don't know I didn't even realize this happened, but he he slammed the door again in my face, and all of a sudden, I noticed one of my nails fell off, but I opened the door again, still talking shit, even though, you know how you have acrylic nails on, and you even, you can hit your finger just a little bit, and that bitch gonna fucking hurt. My nail was hurting a little bit, but 
I was so mad and so upset that I wasn't focusing on my hands or my nails. I, all I knew is that one of my nails fell off. And he was like, look at you, you you're breaking your nails. I'm like, no, you did this. So he slammed the door again in my face. And this time he actually slammed my finger in the door because he was slamming the, he was slamming the door so hard that he fucking, I'll show y'all the picture right now. He slammed, the, he slammed the door in my face so hard that my nail, like the top part of my nail came off and it actually cracked my real nail. And this is the actual nail that I'm talking about. It's healed now and stuff like that. But um, he actually cracked my real nail as well. Like my, like the top part of my, my acrylic and my fake nail was off. And then all you, and then like the bottom part of my uh, fake nail was still on. However, you could still see my nail, and it was like cracked, and it started bleeding. I didn't, I didn't realize it until afterwards, uh, until after I had finally walked out, because I was like, "Fuck my nail!" And uh, I just left the door closed, and then I had went sat down, cause I was um I was working in the living room. That's where my computer was, and so I had went sat down by the living room, and I had noticed I only had a little bit of time left before my lunch was over and then whenever I noticed that my nail was fucking like gushing blood out oh God, I started man. realizing my fucking I started realizing how much pain I was in I, then that's when I started feeling the pain because I guess the adrenaline and stuff like that of me arguing with him I didn't notice it until at that point whenever I noticed it I my finger my whole hand as a matter of fact was on fire I didn't think nothing of it until it was like I also like my my finger was split a little bit on the side as well. My, my nail was covered in blood, so I couldn't really see exactly how bad it was. All I knew was that my fucking hand was on fire and my my nail was off and I'm, I'm bleeding. So as y'all can see by the videos, y'all can see the little droplets of blood on my computer, um, my keyboard and stuff like that. Yeah, that. And I, the reason why I took those pictures is because I didn't know where our relationship was going to go at that point. I didn't know if I was going to need it for proof. I didn't know what, what, was, what I was going to need it for, but I knew I needed to take the pictures. So that's why I took the pictures, and I'm just not using them. Um, I didn't know why. I didn't know what I was going to do with, with the pictures, but I still had the, had the pictures. Never deleted it, but I guess I'm, this is the reason why um, God put that in my mind to take pictures of it. Um, but anyways, I went ahead and typed... Me, that's the point I was crying, I was bawling because I was in so much pain. Um, then I had typed my supervisor and I was like, I had a, told her I had a family emergency or something like that. And uh, I had to leave early. And so I uh, clocked out, logged out or whatever. And he ended up coming <coughs> out of the room into the living room. And he saw like the trail of blood or whatever on the floor. And he told me, whenever he saw the blood and stuff like that, he was like, oh, I bet that don't hurt as much as cutting yourself hurt. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck would you say that? Like, why, why would you compare this to my fucking, for, to me cutting myself when, again, I didn't, I wasn't cutting myself for fucking attention. That was, that was something that, like, I shared with you because I felt like I needed to share it with you, not so that you could throw it in my face. And so he basically, he was trying to make it seem like it was my fault that my finger got slammed and stuff like that, which really it wasn't because had you not been slamming my motherfucking door, had you not been so mad and so upset, the force of the door wouldn't have fucked my finger up as much as it did. So I, was, I wasn't even trying to talk to him at that point. Um, my daughter was in the room the entire time, by the way, uh, with the door closed, but I'm more than sure she heard it or oh, whatever. I told her to put her shoes on and stuff like that. Um, I grabbed my keys and then I left to go to the hospital. Um, he, was he blowing on my phone <clears throat> yet? No, I think he did. He was like, where you going? I'm like, I'm going to the hospital. And y'all, y'all know how, I'm, how I used to tell y'all how my mama used to just go to the hospital for no reason. He compared me to my mama. He was like, oh, you just like your mama. I'm like, what do you mean? My fucking finger is fucking gushing out blood. How am I just like my mama? I'm not going to the hospital just to fucking sit sit there and just have a wristband and post on a Snapchat that, hey, I'm in a fucking hospital. Like, no, that's not what I'm doing it for. So um, that's another fucked up thing he said. So me and my daughter, we went to the hospital. I can't say that was one of the most traumatizing experiences for me, but it, I felt like for her... Yeah, it was a dramatic experience, especially that my daughter was was with me. Um, I went to the hospital, and uh, you know how the nurses and doctors ask you questions and stuff like that, how you got your injury and stuff like that, and um, I lied. I lied, and I told them that I slammed my finger in the car door. Um, 
I don't condone lying about stuff like that that happens to you, especially whenever someone else did that. I like no one should be that upset, but um, to you know to cause some type of injury like that for you. Like I said, I didn't know how bad my injury was until um, they wanted to they cleaned my finger and I couldn't move it at all. I just thought it would just because you know like my finger was just in so much pain. Yeah, I, I thought it was like swollen or something, but um, they t actually took me to do an x-ray on my hand. And mind you, my daughter was with me. <laughs> my daughter was asking me, she was like, Mama, what happened to your finger? And I can't remember what I told her, um, but I didn't tell her exactly what happened. I probably told her the same thing that I told um, the doctor or whatever. And because my, my daughter, my baby, she's really, really like concerned about me. Like she don't like to see me in pain. She don't like me getting a shot. Like when I was giving birth to my son, like she was like, oh my God, mommy, are you okay? <laughs> like she, she <coughs> don't like to see me in pain. Um, so we went in the back or whatever um, to get my x-ray and um, my daughter, like, there was two people in there. It was like a guy doing the x-ray and then there was a lady like, um, like in the back or whatever. And so my daughter went in the back with the lady like behind a glass or behind something where, you know, it protects them from the radiation and stuff like that. And she was just talking to her and um, she gave her like sticker and stuff, like trying to get her, her mind off of what's going on with her mom. And um, basically my finger was fractured. Um, it, it was fractured. I didn't know that it was, but they told me that it was fractured. And um, the little cut that I told you I had on the side of my finger, I don't know if y'all can see that in the pictures or not, but um, that had to be stitched up as well. I've never had stitches before. I've never broke nothing. I've never even fractured anything <laughs> in my life until that particular time. And um, they gave me stitches and they also, they after they cleaned it, they had to like burn the middle of my, I'm sorry, it's so gross and it was so painful. Um, but they had to, had to burn the middle of my finger to, um, to stop the bleeding. Oh, I didn't know. Carterized, whatever, to stop the bleeding, and that hurt like fuck. Um, and they, like I said, they stitched it up, and they gave me some numbing stuff that didn't fucking work. Like, bitch, the numbing stuff hurt. And then even after y'all started stitching me up, I still felt that shit. But anyways, um, <coughs> and um, after they did that, they wrapped it up like really, really good. Like basically, my whole hand was wrapped up, even though it was just my finger. But, um, I couldn't move my hand at all. Um, but, um, after that happened, I had, um, decided to go see my son. I didn't go straight home. I decided to see my son, which I didn't tell Ghost this. But, uh, me and uh, my daughter, we went to, um, see my son. And I had, I, I believe while I was in the hospital, I was telling, um, Freddie, my son's dad, what was going on or whatever. He knew a lot about what was going on. He even told me to, like, stop messing with him a long time ago or whatever. But, um, you know, he know how I am. I'm fucking hard-headed and stuff like that. But anyways, I went over there to spend time with my son because, like I said, I, my son hadn't been living with me, you know, like he was or the, the whole week on and week off. I didn't have that. At that, once my mom moved out, all of that changed because, like I said, I no longer felt comfortable with my son being there with him or whatever. Um, unfortunately, my daughter had to be with me because she didn't have anywhere to go, you know, like she didn't have her father in her life or anything like that or no one else. And I didn't want to, like, I didn't have really any family. I, I mean, I had family, I had an aunt, but they despised the relationship so much, especially after this point, um, which I will talk about later. But, um, like, I didn't want to tell anybody about it, so my daughter was with me or whatever, even though I hate that she was. But anyways, um, Ghost at this point was blowing up my phone, asking me where I was and this and that. And I had ended up telling him that I was with my uh, friend, Courtney. That's her real name, too. I ain't got to disguise her. But um, I told him that I was with my friend, Courtney. And, um, and he knew I was at the hospital, too, or whatever. Cause, yeah, because I told him right before I left that I was going to the hospital. And he was like, oh, you over there um, showing off your finger and trying to get advice, huh? I'm like, what the fuck you mean I'm showing off my finger, my nigga? Like, it, first of all, you clearly hurt hurt me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do this by myself. You did it. If you wasn't so upset 
and you wasn't slamming my fucking door, like, this wouldn't have happened to begin with. Like, if you would have just answered my question, this wouldn't have happened. So, what do you mean? I'm, I'm over here showing off my finger and getting advice. Like, my nigga, even if I was getting advice, like, that's my motherfucking business. So, he started blowing my shit, blowing up my shit, because we, I was actually outside talking to um, Freddie before I left, you know, about the situation, because he saw my finger, and whenever I went inside, because he was, this was whenever Freddie was still living with his mom, um, and his mom obviously saw my finger and stuff like that, and, uh, even though they didn't, like, they're the type, like, they be knowing what be going on, but they don't like to, like, really get in your business unless you ask them for advice or unless you say something, um, which was good or whatever, but, um, I knew everybody was, like, seeing my finger, like, my patch, like, my, my bandage was, like, big as hell, like, it was the first thing you probably would have saw in my hand, um, but I finally decided to go home, this is before I actually left, he got so upset that he was like he he threw his fucking laptop and broke his fucking laptop that his mom gave to him and stuff like this. So I'm talking about ghosts, by the way. I don't forgot to throw that in there. But that's how how bad his anger was. Like he's a fucking he even punched a hole in both of like my um my room door and also the guest bathroom. He like ruined everything. Like he the the house was just like a mess. But um once I got to the house, on my way to the house, right, I was really, really scared. I was really, really nervous because I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, like that, at that point, I started to become afraid of him. Um, but I, I sure enough, I went to my, I mean, it's my house. I went to my house. Um, and so whenever I went there, he saw my finger and he was like, he basically was apologizing. He was like, I'm so sorry. Um... You, it's like he was saying, I'm so sorry, but you kept running after me. I told you I didn't want to talk and this and that. I understand you don't want to talk, but you also have to understand that you're in my home. And if I ask you a question, like, you should. And then we're in, we're in a relationship. Like, you can't run away from something, something like that, especially if you know you're not in the wrong. My nigga, if you know you're not wrong, just go ahead and talk to me. Don't run away from the situation. But if you feel like you're wrong, you're going to do stuff like you just did. So he was apologizing and whatnot, and um, I was just like just listening to him and stuff like that, and you know just listening to him uh, his useless ass apology. He was like, "I'm sorry." It's just like whenever I want to be left alone, I need to be left alone, and this and that. Just making up excuses basically, and he started acting. Like, he started acting like he was sorry. I'm not going to lie to y'all. He really genuinely started acting like he was sorry. Like, I couldn't really do much with my hand. <laughs> so, what he did was he ran some fucking, fucking water, some bath water, and put some fucking bubbles in it. And told me to get in the tub and fucking help me take a bath. And I'm saying that, like, y'all know it's, most bitches probably like, oh, that's so romantic. No, bitch, that's not romantic. Like, uh, niggas, like, abusive men... They do things like that. They hurt you, and they try to pamper you afterwards with stuff like that to make you try to forget about what just happened. And, yeah, it would have been nice or whatever if he would have did that just because he wanted to do it. But, like I said, he was never affectionate. He was never nice like that. He never did anything sweet on his own. So, it's like, you doing that, like, that meant nothing to me because I, you, you're doing that because you know you, you fucked up. So... He literally, y'all, literally gave me a fucking bath. And that felt so fucking uncomfortable. Like, nigga, I don't need nobody to give me no bath. I don't even want my nigga today to give me a bath. Like, what the fuck? And I know he did out of guilt. And so even the next day, he had, like, the house needed to be cleaned up because he fucking ruined it so so bad by his fucking anger, throwing shit that he had through the fucking ottoman across the fucking uh, living room and all this type of stuff. And he told me to sit down. He had one of the pillows. And he had, well, he actually uh, propped up two pillows so I could prop, prop my hand up on it and stuff like that. Because, like, my hand literally was on fire. And, um, like, it was, I can't explain. I couldn't move my finger for the longest, y'all. And, um, like, I couldn't even get my nails done for the longest. Like, it took me, I, I got my nails done, like, four, four weeks, about four weeks later. And it still wasn't fully healed. And the lady even, the lady at the nail salon, she's like, oh, you slammed your finger in the door? And I'm like, yeah, I did. Because like, it's like she automatically knew what happened. I guess nail techs know when stuff like that happened. And I'm going along with like, yeah, I slammed my finger in the door. And um, she, 
told me, well, do you want me to leave, leave the nail off of this one? Because it's, it's, it might just come off. And I'm like, no, it's this heel. I believe it's heel. So she went ahead and did it. And like a week and a half later, like the nail fucking came off again. Like my nail literally was off. Like you know how your your nail is on the nail bed, like like in a nail bed. Like whenever you try to like push pull your nail up, you can't because it's like stuck to your nail. My nail wasn't like that. It was literally off. Do you understand me? Like but first of all, after after I was able to take the bandage off, I only had half of a nail, like my real nail. I only had half of it and like the top part like just the bottom part was still on there like very little of it but the bottom part was still on there and then like the top part was just naked like all you saw was my nail like my nail bed and I've never seen anything like that before like you know how some people no mind I have seen stuff like that before like when people like lose their nail completely and that's another thing I asked the doctor I'm like am I gonna lose my nail and she said something like if it would have been worse or if I wouldn't have went to the hospital whenever right when I went there I could have lost my entire nail and um it would have never grown grew back but uh, she told me that it wasn't that bad and that it would grow back which it did grow back but it grew whenever it first started growing back it grew back so weird that like I said it whenever he went grew back to the, the regular size I can literally pull my nail up under and see everything underneath my nail and that was so weird and it was so freaky and my nail still fucking hurt um for hurting for a while but um it eventually grew back but like i said whenever i first tried to get my nails done that nail came off completely because it wasn't attached to my actual nail bell my, my actual nail um, nail bed for a while like it, it, it didn't attach so um after that happened i just stopped getting my nails done for a long time and i became like kind of depressed because i'm like damn i can't much do stuff like get my nails done. like i love to get my nails done and i'm like i can't get my nails done because of this simple this dumbass incident you know over this dumbass person and um one time I, my daughter went to my aunt's house um which is the only family that i had in houston at the time my grandma just not moved back um but that was my the only family i had in houston and one time my daughter went over there i don't know how this happened but she basically kids and see everything and you can't tell a kid to not say stuff that they see and um they ended up she ended up telling my aunt that um he hurt my finger i don't know how she knew he hurt my finger because i didn't tell her that he hurt my finger but um she told them and they were uh whatever and mind y'all they never even liked him to begin with after they saw how he treated me whenever my i found out my grandfather passed and he didn't like hug me console me do none of that like they, they didn't fucking like him so whenever they told him that they was fucking livid and um they asked me about it and I was like, oh, you know, basically taking up for him. I'm not going to lie. Um, I was just like, oh, no, he, uh, it was just an accident. You know, he, he just slammed the door and then, you know, my, my hand happened to be right there. And it, it, you know, hurt my finger. And it was like, Angelique, that's not an accident. Like, if he, he shouldn't have been that mad for that to even fucking happen to begin with, which is true. Um, but I know... I, this the situation that i'm talking about right now a lot of people a lot of women don't like to talk about it because they're afraid they're ashamed about how of how dumb they were i'm not ashamed of it anymore because i feel like i did some dumb stuff went through some dumb things you know dealt with some dumb people i, I can't dwell on that so my purpose of telling my story is so that i can t t help others like it's okay like everyone has been done before you know what i'm saying but it's your job to get to recognize and to move on from it that's all i'm trying to do but yeah i definitely took up for him um which was a huge mistake because i still stayed with him april may june i still stayed with him for about two months for um yeah i still stayed with him two months more after that and um it didn't get any better he continued to put his hands on me but we're gonna talk about that in my next few story times um so yeah that's my story uh, how he you know basically broke my finger uh and i thought that i would never heal from it i thought my nail would just be like that forever but thank god it healed and i'm able to get my nails done um but yeah more of the story is y'all whenever a man puts his puts their hands on you or a woman or a woman because women yeah women do it too <laughs> Um, but if your significant other puts their hands on you for the very first time out of anger, you know, it's, 
it's a, it's a no. Like, you, it's, you gotta go. You gotta get out of that situation because it's only gonna get worse. If they put their hands on you once, they're gonna do it again. And if you keep forgiving them, they're gonna keep doing it until you say, uh, it's, they're either gonna keep doing it until you end up dead or they're gonna keep doing it until you end up, you know, until you fed up. And, um, thankfully, I just got fed up and I didn't, you know, end up dead or anything like that. But I probably, I feel like, a lot of stuff that he put, he put me through even after this situation that I'm talking about, I could have ended up dead, honestly, because uh, he was that crazy. It's like whenever he, excuse me, whenever he got mad, it's like everything changed. He was a total different person. Like, I didn't even know who this person was whenever he got ma that mad. And no one should ever, ever be able to make you that upset. And uh, I feel like that's why he went through the same thing with his ex, because I've come to, come to find out he was putting his hands on his ex. Um, so if you watch my other story times, y'all will know I talked about a class that he had to go through or go to every week. It was a domestic violence class, but he claimed that it was a class because he had a, uh, he did a, he got charged with robbery or something like that. But how do you get charged with robbery, but you got to take a domestic violence class? So I ended up finding out the truth later down the line, which we'll talk about. <laughs> later down the line because like i said these stories we're i don't even think we're halfway done yet so um my next story time is going to be about how the cops raided our house all because of him yeah um and actually raided our house twice in the same week so stay tuned to that story time um if you haven't subscribed already yeah i did my moral yeah that's all my moral i need to do just don't allow a man to put their hands on you but um, if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe, um, comment. If, you, if you've been through any situation like this, don't be afraid to talk about it. If you don't want to talk about it in my comments, email me. Write me on Snap, Instagram. Like, don't be afraid. Like, you are not alone. Like, domestic violence is real. Like, it's real. A lot of people don't talk about it because they're afraid, especially women. But I'm not afraid. I'm going to be that one woman that ain't afraid to talk about it. Um, Just, I, I'm thankful that I was able to get out of it. So... Uh, like I said, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on so that you can be notified whenever I upload a next video or a new video. And I'm going to see y'all in my next video. Bye. You know, I want to talk about it. He has his head down on the, uh, on the kitchen uh, table, whatever. I mean, on the dining room table. And he would just listen to some music. So I'm like... Nigga, what is wrong with you? Like, what, what was going on? And so he finally ended up telling me what was wrong. He was like, it's not fair. And I'm like, what's not fair? And he was like, 